Welcome to Liberty Explained. We are your guide to libertarianism. Your hosts are me, Chris Spangle, Julia Geyer, and Levy Rainey. We break down a complicated ideology and a movement in small digestible pieces and try to help you understand what the heck is going on. What is all of this about? I have, I'm curious. I have questions. Give me answers. Well, if you do have questions, you can email us at ask at wearelibertarians.com. And we'll answer your questions. If your friends have questions that are they're asking you and you're just like, I need somebody, please help bail us out. Send it in. We'll put a research team on it and we'll give you an answer. This podcast is produced by the We Are Libertarians Network. Check out all of our shows at wearelibertarians.com. My co-hosts are Julia Geyer. Julia, how are you? Great. How are you, Chris? Oh, I'm, I'm fantastic. And then Levy is over there just still eating chips. Levy, how are you? <laughs> I'm less hungry. Thank you. <laughs> so, if you're new to the show, what we do here is we answer questions like we said. Uh, I'm a longtime libertarian. Julie is a longtime libertarian. Levy is a baby libertarian who asks the questions that you, in your head, what I've noticed about Levy through this show is that People email me and they go, I was thinking the question and then Levy asked it. So we're thankful for your contribution. We can all be stupid together. That's right. It's Today okay to be stupid as long as you don't stay there. That's the that's tagline. Right. There's no such thing as a stupid question. No, that's okay, not true. Continue forward. <laughs> <laughs> the only stupid question is the question not asked. If you asked me why is red blue, I'd be like, Julia, that's a dumb question. Actually, I'd ask, are you okay? Are you running for president? Um, so today we're talking about can the LP win? This is a question that we get all the time. What the heck, Libertarian Party? Why aren't you winning races? So we're going to answer that question. Can the LP win? And I want to start by defining what a win is. Now, if you don't really think deeply about politics or understand a lot about it, you think win presidency, win Senate races. That's the definition of a win, right? Like that's... If you're just sort of gleaning off of social media, that's the definition of a win. Now, will Joe Jorgensen in 2020 or Gary Johnson in 2016 or whoever in 2024 win enough electoral votes to become president of the United States? Let's just be real. Probably not. Uh, the, the, the presidential Ooh. race. I know the presidential race is typically a marketing race. And it is about, you know, at a national level as a minority party using its voice to impact the the duopoly of the the, the two party system and helping uh, give voice to expanding freedoms and limiting and limited and, and advocating for limiting government hopefully they market and message better than i just did um now uh th so if you're talking will they win the presidential race Probably not. But Julia, there are a ton of elected libertarians around the country and a ton of libertarians that impact on local levels. Yeah. Yeah. So from this perspective, there are wins to be had in working with both parties um, on a local level. Any candidate can win an election. So like given the old adage, all politics is local, it's crucial to have like local is where it's at you know it's really important and um that's where it all starts um liberty-minded candidates on a local level um prove our party's ability to govern so um it's really important and you should be supporting your local libertarians um there are libertarians serving in government and right now and there have been for a while um there's a lot of them and you can go to my.lp.org slash elected dash officials and it'll give you um like a list of all the the libertarians that are serving government now yeah there's a ton of elected libertarians across the nation and you just have not heard of them because they don't get national press it's really hard to win on a national scale or even a statewide scale because of ballot access laws. As we've discussed in another episode, Republicans and Democrats collude to make sure that only they have the ability to win elections on, on big scales. But at the local level, candidates can win a lot and they do. And that, that can be an example of a win. And that is another example of strength. But another reason that the libertarian, the, another way, I guess you could say that the libertarian party will win is 
by influencing their opponents through debates, through pr- just being on the trail. And I, I have one specific example. The current vice president, Mike Pence, was running in 2012 uh, for governor of Indiana. He was leaving Congress and he was uh, hoping to run for president in 2016. And so he decided he should run for governor and, and then springboard and into that. That's what happened. Don't argue with me. And so he uh, was running against Rupert Bonham, the Libertarian Party candidate for governor. The guy from Survivor ran for governor. He's a big libertarian. And Rupert has worked with disadvantaged youth and people trying to get out of the criminal justice system and people that college, where college was never really an option for them. And vocational training has been greatly diminished in Indiana because of various reasons and dried up funds and state policy. And so Rupert ran, one of his policy planks was return vocational education to schools because not everybody is going to college. And if we can teach them these these life skills and vocational training skills in schools, you're going to have less crime. You're going to have less recidivism. You're going to have all these all of these societal problems if you can get people on a good educational path. Mike Pence heard it. He liked it. He t- he tested it. He pulled it. It tested really well. So he made it one of his planks in the race. He ran TV commercials on it. And when he was elected governor, he enacted the law that Rupert talked about on the campaign trail. That happens all the time. You'd not believe that how many times you're out on the trail as a libertarian candidate in a forum or a town hall with your Republican or Democratic opponent that will win where they get your phone number and they will, if you're a serious libertarian candidate, you end up becoming friends with the person that got elected and they bounce things off of you because they want your perspective. And so that's another really solid win for libertarians in helping to shape and uh, change their government. Yeah. I think it's um, a really, a really powerful. Excuse me. I think that's a really powerful thing too, and and not to be um, overlooked. Um, so, question: um, Do converted congressmen count as wins, like Justin Amash or Laura Epke? Um, yeah, Laura Epke was a state senator in Nebraska, I believe, and uh, you know, here in Indianapolis, we had a sitting city councilor named Ed Coleman in uh, about a decade ago who was who switched to the Libertarian Party and he was the highest elected he was serving a million people um, there's some statewide people in Arizona I believe that have switched and uh, to the Libertarian Party it happens all the time um, I guess you could consider that a win I mean Libertarian Party people consider that a win uh, you th- these are important moments because it shows the Libertarian Party fundamentally is a protest. It's a protest on the ballot that is highly measurable. So people who say the Libertarian Party shouldn't exist are just wrong because by voting Libertarian, you are registering a protest vote. When you have a city councilor or a congressman or one of these elected officials switch, it's a protest. It's a signal that you're doing something wrong that you need to shape up, that you need to reform. And so, you know, and and which in the 10, 15 years that I've been around, it starts with the town council, then it went to city council. Now it's a congressman, you know, and you see the strength of the Libertarian Party growing continually. So when somebody's willing to make that flip to become the first Libertarian congressman, I consider that a win because it's a sign of strength. It's a sign of trust and faith in a, a party that, you know, not a lot of us have a, a lot of trust and faith in, but it's there. It's available. It's You're able to use that to register that protest and maybe launch something bigger and better. So I consider it a win. I don't know about you guys. I mean, people who voted for these folks who are Republicans don't consider Justin Amash a win if he if he flips, but they're Republicans. So, I mean, they're going to well, do feel it. Like it's, I feel like it's an even bigger win because you have someone, because there are plenty of libertarians who have believed this way forever. And it's the only thing that makes sense to them. And they can't even see the like perspective of another party. But when you have someone who comes from another party and then they see like the faults of their own and they're like, oh no, actually like I'm wrong. And I want to do it. Like that's huge. I think that conversion is speaks even more strongly. I agree with you, Levy. I think that it like it shows 
people from whichever party they're coming from, Republican usually, um, that you can change your mind and that maybe, you know, I, I changed my mind. So maybe check this party out. I think, um, I think it's pretty powerful. I definitely think it's a win. It's not a win as in like an election, but who cares? Like, I think it's, and also those people have huge platforms. So it, it does a lot for the party in terms of people being like, Oh, what's a libertarian? Oh, exactly. That's, that's such a huge part of it. Yeah. Oh. The marketing, the marketing part of it is enormous. I think it's really good. I think it, it makes the party stronger. So you, you just have to define what your view of a win is. I mean, yeah. to me, like influencing policy is a win. Mm-hmm. You know, having the ability to register a protest vote is a win. Electing people on a local level is a win. Switching is a win. Like, is Joe Jorgensen going to win? I'd like her to win, but at least she's there so I can tell the other two parties, I don't like what you gave me. Right. And I've watched right. that percentage grow over time. How's that not a win? Right. Because so many people, especially recently, obviously, have been like, oh, why are you why are you even voting for Joe Jorgensen? She can't win. And I'm like, I don't care if she can't win. I'm not voting for someone I don't believe in. I'm not voting right. on policies that go against all the principles that I believe in. And I, I have a party that actually upholds all all the principles that I believe in. And I'm like, I'm going to support them because that's the right thing to do. Exactly. So, yeah. Levy, anything you'd like to add? No, I think I'm good. I don't have any questions this time, surprisingly. Excellent. Well, that's a win. Thank you for joining (laughs) us here on Liberty Explained. Julia, Levy, thank you so much for being with us, with me. Of course. Sorry. I'm used to saying that on Weird Liberty. Thanks for joining us. Uh, All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Please share these. I mean, Julia, the most important thing anybody can do is share all these questions and get people thinking in a different direction. Yeah, guys, the reason we made these such short like um, clips is so that you can share them. They're very shareable. So post them on social media, text them to your friends, your family, whoever. Like if there's someone in your life that you're like, oh, this person's torn up about the election, maybe they would be interested in this. Send it to them, you know? Yeah, we bullet point all the copy too, so you can go and grab the bullet pointed copy and and notes, so you don't that you can just grab that and use that in your online arguments and and persuasion. So, all right, thanks for joining us here. Check us out at libertyexplained.com, and we will see you again soon. <laughs>